Hi, it's Melvin Way, and this is a video on fungus gnats. So, what are fungus gnats? In case you don't know, there are these little black gnat-like creatures. If you look very closely, they're a lot skinnier than fruit flies. They don't have those, uh, you know, whitish beige bellies that are full of food and or eggs or whatever. These are very thin-looking creatures. They're like miniature mosquitoes, and you'll see them buzzing around uh, house plants that have potting mix that are overwatered. So here's a trick I tried later on. You know, I just had these strips of packaging tape covering my entire pot surface as the infestation grew very heavy with my ginger plants. But this is what it looks like when there's any kind of condensation. You know, I left a sliding door open in winter during the day, and when I came home, I saw this. So basically, the tape doesn't work, despite being very sticky when dry. When it's wet from condensation, it doesn't do anything, and all these uh, fungus gnats just crawl around on the underside of the tape and make these artistic skating patterns. I call this the Sistine Chapel of fungus gnat civilization. It's very interesting to look at, but you know I don't think this tape method really does anything. It might hold them off for a while, but the pot is spawning hundreds of fungus gnats every week or even every day. Let me introduce you to the life cycle of the fungus gnat. So this is the URL at the bottom of this website where I got the picture from. So you start with eggs. So you get eggs by buying potting mix or soil from these big box stores. So unless you sterilize your potting mix or soil, you're going to get a lot of bugs in them. And then there are four grub larval instars. They molt between each instar and get bigger and bigger. You know, insects have rigid exoskeletons. And then they become pupae after the fourth instar stay there for a while then they metamorphosize into adults they slightly resemble miniature mosquitoes but they actually don't feed at all so there's really nothing you can offer them there's no kind of food that they really want from you and that's also very problematic in getting rid of the adults they just buzz around like you know drunken idiots in front of your face and they try to seek out rotting material to lay their eggs in so the fungus gnat life cycle is about 28 days and because of that it's really frustrating to try to exterminate them as you can try different things and then you might have to wait one whole month to see if it worked because whatever you're doing might take a really long time to work its way into the soil or whatever and try to kill off the larvae. So here's some more close-ups of fungus gnats that are trapped to tape. Well, the bottom one is just kind of sitting on the edge of the pot. So a pot can generate you know a hundred or even hundreds of these every day and this is just a modest sized you know 14 inch diameter pot so if you have a much bigger volume of soil indoors it could be very devastating and towards the bottom here I'll show you much better close-ups later but I this was the first time I saw you know a fungus gnat grub on the bottom of a rotting part of a ginger shoot you may have heard of using mosquito dunks to get rid of fungus gnat larvae in your potted plants. And let me tell you, I tried this. I had tried dunks and soaks and whatever, drenches, and that basically did nothing but generate even more fungus gnats because the potting mix was just sopping wet all the time, and that provided a lot of food for them. I've tried using pyrethroid-based insecticides and even digging up the first few inches of soil and spraying this around and mixing it really well because I've heard that fungus gnats live in the first few inches of the soil. But that really did nothing, nothing at all. So I was quite surprised that something that could control most insects did nothing against fungus gnats. Here's an example of what I was talking about earlier. You can soak this in a larger tub that's watertight and let the water level equilibrate and I basically call this a drowning it's a thorough soaking and that does nothing you know you can take this out and the next day you're gonna have even more fungus gnats emerging than ever before so I don't understand why that is but apparently even drowning does nothing to fungus gnat larvae and perhaps it accelerates the emergence of adults from the pupae this was taken from my ginger growing series. You should definitely check that out and subscribe to my channel. It's uh, Melvin Way's channel. So what happened here was that I couldn't take it anymore. There were just hundreds of fungus gnats landing on me at all times. Uh, you know, when I'm brushing my teeth in the bathroom at night, I can see tons of them flying around on the mirror trying to get to the lights. 
and I couldn't take it anymore. So I just uprooted everything, washed off these roots. Uh, there was a little bit of root rot because your average potting mix is just so hygroscopic. It holds on to too much water and provides too much food for the fungus gnats. So this is immersed in a 0.3% hydrogen peroxide solution. And that's just to clean everything off and provide some oxygen while, you know, getting rid of any nasty stuff still on there. So there was a little bit of root rot, but this was the only way I could salvage the operation while still tolerating it being indoors. Um, you, of course, you could just move everything outdoors, but then um, certain plants like ginger would just die because it's just too cold, at least during the winter outdoors in a potted plant environment. So this solved the problem in one day. Basically, there were no more fungus gnats. There were a few stragglers that were already just kind of flying around my house, but, you know, everything was quickly solved within 24 hours. And I got rid of all the potting mix, and I moved it outside onto the balcony. So I definitely wouldn't recommend potting mix for anything. It's basically infested with eggs, and it holds on to too much water. It can easily cause root rot. So I tackled this situation by sterilizing a new growth medium. This is some quality footage of a fungus gnat larvae that I got recently. They have transparent bodies, black heads, and you can even see the brown digested material inside their digestive systems if you look closely enough. So they're just like any other grubs, and what it's feeding on are these wood chips and potting mix. Potting mix is not like any kind of dirt you will find outside. Wood chips are very water absorbent and because of that they're basically rotting all the time. So that's a recipe for disaster for an indoor potted plant. I don't want this rot all the time. I want something more akin to a natural sandy soil with better drainage. So I'm going to show you what I did after this. This is a bag of play sand that I bought, 50 pound bag, and it's been pre-washed. The importance of that is hopefully this sand won't contain any salt that would affect plant growth. But sand is very good in that it wicks away moisture and it's inorganic. Bugs can't eat it or live in it really in the absence of anything else. And basically it'll provide drainage and aeration. This is diatomaceous earth. It's a very fine powder consisting of the fossilized remains of diatoms, uh, microorganisms, a type of algae. It's basically silicon dioxide, 80 to 90% of it a little bit of uh, alumina as well, and a little bit of iron oxide. So basically these are very small and sharp fine particulates that will hopefully scratch the insects and absorb their oils and kill them. And this is sphagnum peat moss coming from cold peat bogs and cold climes. And this basically is pretty absorbent, but it's nutritious and it doesn't break down very fast. I don't want something that's rotting at a very rapid rate like wood chips all day generating more bugs so I'm gonna mix this all together this will be about 40 percent of my mix and I'm gonna sterilize it in the oven and hopefully that can serve as a good new growing mix for my ginger plants this is what the three components look like before the mixing the dark one is a sphagnum peat moss it more closely resembles dirt than you know potting mix that you buy in stores uh, the white stuff that's a very fine powder, it's very clay-like, is the diatomaceous earth. Uh, particle diameters are very, very small, you know, averaging around one micron or less. And then on the far side, you see some sand. It's more of a beige color. Uh, that's the play sand. So I'm going to mix these all up really well with gloves and basically put this in the oven where I'm going to sterilize everything. I'm mostly just afraid of stuff being in the sphagnum peat moss you know, insect eggs. So this is what the finalized mixture looks like. I'm going to put it in the oven, you know, um, 300 Fahrenheit, which is 149 Celsius for, I don't know, at least an hour and a half is what I normally do. So this is just a small sample. This isn't what I did for my ginger. It's for a, another growing experiment. And basically, that should kill any insect eggs or pathogens that are inside mold, whatever and we should be able to get a fresh start free of fungus gnats. So here's a recap of all the things that don't work. The BTI, BT toxin, mosquito dunk approach, that doesn't work. Drownings of any kind don't work. Um, hydrogen peroxide drenches and 
drownings, those don't work either. And pyrethroid-based insecticides don't seem to work at all either. So you can use more potent insecticides, but you should only use pyrethroid-based insecticides if it's something you're going to be eating later on or cooking with. So this is a self-watering pot. I'll be watering from that watering tray in the bottom in the future. On the top, I have a centimeter thick layer of sand. And beneath that, maybe a two millimeter thick layer of diatomaceous earth. Then that prevents fungus net entry.